Hello, Curran here. This video is about why visualize data and what is data visualization anyway? I'm going to present some slides created by Tamara Munzner to go along with her excellent book, Visualization Analysis and Design. Here's a definition of visualization. Computer-based visualization systems provide visual representations of data sets designed to help people carry out tasks more effectively. But why? The real focus here is data sets and people and tasks. Regarding data sets and people, visualization is suitable when there is a need to augment human capabilities rather than replace people with computational decision-making methods, like for example machine learning. You don't need visualization when there is a fully automatic solution that exists and is trusted and it works. For example, um, I don't know, the recommendation system of YouTube or Netflix. Many analysis problems are ill-specified. You see this a lot in, in data science where the question is like, just analyze this data set and I don't know what I'm looking for. This is not the best kind of problem for visualization. The possibilities where visualization really comes in handy or you know what you would want to do with the visualization is here are some examples long-term use for end users for example an exploratory analysis of scientific data that might get published in a journal presentation of known results visualization is really good for just communicating things that you already know really clearly visualizations could be a stepping stone to better understand the requirements of maybe like a machine learning problem before developing models or like statistical models. Where there is an automatic solution, visualization could come in handy to help developers of that automatic solution refine or debug or determine parameters for their models. And again, where there's an automatic solution, visualization could help end users of those solutions verify that they work and build trust in the automated solution. But why use an external representation, a visual representation? The goal of this is to replace cognition with perception. You gotta replace cognitive acts that take a long time with perceptual acts, visual perception, which happens instantly. Let me demonstrate this with an example. We've got this data set that shows religions by country. And the question is, when you look at this data, which country has the most Hindus? The data we're about to look at comes from the Pew Research Center, the Global Religious Landscape Report. Here's the data set. It's a table with three columns, the country, the religion, and the population of people in that country with that religion. By looking through this table, let's try to answer the question, which country has the most Hindus? So in China, there are around 20,000 Hindus. And in India, the number of Hindu people is massive. And the United States, it's this number. In Indonesia, it's this number. In Brazil, it's, well, almost zero. And you get the idea. You'd need to go through the values and store all of the previous values that you've seen in your head and then compare based on what you've seen. Um, this is all what I would call a cognitive act. Reading numbers, remembering numbers, comparing numbers in your head and trying to come up with the solution. Let's contrast that with a visualization of this data set. Here's a stacked bar chart that shows this data set. The colors correspond to the religions, and the size of each slice of each stacked bar corresponds to the number of people who adhere to that religion in that country. Now, to answer the question, which country has the most Hindus, you can look down this list and see that, okay, Hindu is red in here, and then India has the largest slice, which is red. 
interactions like hovering over a color to isolate those segments and also hovering over the segment to get the number also help in answering questions. When you look at this picture and search for red rectangles, this is more of a visual act. It's more of a perceptual act. You can clearly see that in most of these countries there isn't really a visible red area. But then in India there's a huge one and it sort of pops out, especially if you hover over it so that it gets highlighted. This makes it really easy to say, for example, the most Hindus are in India, but also there's a lot of Hindus in Bangladesh, uh, Indonesia, and Pakistan. And there's a few in the United States. That's our example of religions by country. And this illustrates that a visual representation of the data, an external representation, effectively replaces cognition with perception. Here's another example, a data set on migrant deaths. Let's say you want to ask the question, when and where did migrant deaths occur? Also, are there any patterns or trends? Let's take a look at the data table for this. The data set we're about to look at comes from this project called the Migrants Files. Here's the data table. It's a lot bigger and more complex than the other one. But let's take a look at the columns. We've got the cause of death, the date, the, uh, the quarter of the year, the month, the year, the number of people dead, the number of people missing, uh, the combined number of dead and missing, and also a description of the event, what happened. If we scroll over, we can see also there's latitude and longitude, which gives us the location of the event. Latitude and longitude together specify a point on the map. This data set is massive. It has a lot of rows. I think around 3,194 rows. And with this data set, it's nearly impossible to scroll through and read all of this. You know, you just can't do it. You could do it with the other question about the religions and the countries, but with this one, you have to read these dates, read about what happened, remember the number of dead and missing. I mean, there are other techniques you can use, but visualization can really help understand this data. Let's take a look at a visualization of this data set. This visualization shows a date histogram on the bottom where the height of each of these bars corresponds to the number, the total number of dead and missing people for each month. And in this map, one circle corresponds to an event that happened, and the area of the circle corresponds to the number of people dead and missing for that event. With this visualization of the entire data set, you can see that most of the events occurred uh, over here. And there's also zooming in the map. So you can zoom in and get a better sense of the spatial distribution. And also zooming on the map filters the data that's used as input for the visualization on the bottom. If we zoom back out, we can use brushing in the date histogram to filter the data that's shown on the map. And using this technique, we can see a lot of uh, patterns and trends over time. One thing I find interesting is around um, 2013, 2014, let's say mid-2014, there's a huge surge of events north of Tripoli. And then later on, in 20, uh, late 2015, early 2016, there's a surge of migrant deaths along the west coast of Turkey here. I'm no expert in this topic, and I don't really understand why this is. But what I can tell you is that by using an interactive visualization to present and explore this data set, you can very clearly see the patterns and trends in the data, which you can't see by just reading through the data table. So that's our example of the migrant deaths data set. Why represent all the data? I mean, computer-based visualization systems provide visual representations of data sets designed to help people carry out tasks more effectively. But, I mean, you could summarize the data, for example, with statistical summaries. 
But the problem is, with summaries, you lose information, and the details do matter. This data set is a sort of famous and widely used, widely presented example in data visualization communities that illustrates why visualization is in a way more powerful than statistical summaries. This is Anscombe's Quartet. Each of these four plots here, if you take the data in there and you compute statistical summaries, they have identical mean and variance and correlation. But if you show them visually, you can see that they're very different from one another. This first one is sort of, you know, a noisy um, spread of data that is, you know, more or less correlated. But this one, it follows a totally different curve than what, what the model is using. And you don't see that at all in these summary statistics. This third one is a totally straight line with one outlier. And the outliers, you know, outliers really pop out in visualizations, but you, you can easily lose them if you just look at statistical summaries. And this last one is a similar case where you've got a straight line and one outlier that's skewing all of the summaries. So that's Anscombe's Quartet. It's a, it's a good demonstration of why you would want to represent all the data visually. So that's why you would want to visualize data and what visualization is in general. Thanks for watching.